Thank you to Wayne and the worship team. Just a meaningful time of worship. When was the last time that you've been in a service where you just felt the presence of God? When was the last time that you've been in a service where you just the presence of God was so evident that you could reach out and touch Him and knowing that, man, if I just cast in this moment, if I can just cast everything to Him, I know it's, it's going to be okay. So I pray that this morning that you'll take a moment in moments like these, in moments like these, and whatever's happening, in moments like these, I will reach out and touch you. In moments like these, I will sing, I love you, in moments like these. And even as we come to hear God's word this morning, in this moment, in this moment, I just pray that God's word will not only be encouraging, but in the same way that we know that God's word is sharper than a two-edged sword, that it'll pierce into our hearts this morning, and not bring about guilt or shame, but bring conviction in our heart of who we need to be of honoring our King and King, a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So this morning, if your Bibles are open, we're going through a series called True Treasure, and we're journeying through Psalms 119. And like you know that, um, for those that have been journeying with us, that we're not going throughout the whole psalm. It is the longest psalm in the Bible. <laughs> and when we look at the psalm, it's a prayer. And this morning, we're going to see the prayer of the psalmist. And, um, and we, have encouraged, we have encouraged you to bring your Bibles. So I'm going to put you on the spot. If we can just adjust the sound. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. How many of you have your swords here? So I'm going to ask you, swords up. That's your sword. Good. Amen. And I know, I know, I know, guys, that we live in the 21st century. <laughs> so the Bibles are on your phone. They are on the tablet. And, and I know that, uh, and I get that. Um, my mom even calls me old school. <laughs> my mom even calls me old school. But there's just something about the written word. There's something about having it in your hand. There's something about highlighting it and doing something that's heresy to us of highlighting it or, or whatever that might look like to you. But young people, I, I pray that at some point in your life that you'll own the written word. Okay? It's good on the cell phone. I know that you can have it any t anywhere, any place, anytime. I have it on my phone. I have a few versions on my phone. And I know that technology has made it easier for us to do that. But just bear with us for this next few weeks and bring the written word. Can we do that? And there's a few words that I asked you to highlight right in the beginning and when we come across it, words like precepts, if you're going to underline that, words like law, words like commandments, the way, statute. Did you remember that? So when you come across it, it's just a way to interact with God's word and to see uh, what he's saying. But this morning, we're going to get into God's word and the title of my sermon is Finishing Well. Now, for, for some of us, there's a few folk that are sitting in the, in the congregation here this morning where that's maybe a real thing for us. <laughs> I, I, I'm at the brink of, I want to finish well. <laughs> and maybe for some of us are just getting onto this journey of like, yes, I know I want to finish well, but I still got a long way to go. And maybe for us, we're in the middle and we're discovering this thing. So there's a few folk that are sitting here and some of us, we're thinking that, yeah, is, I don't know if I'm going to be in five years' time. <laughs> And I want to finish well. But the title of the sermon is Finishing Well. So I'm just going to play a video clip that's just going to highlight and be an intro to the sermon this morning. Thanks, Coke. Okay, hold on. Hold on, rest for a minute. I'm talk to you for a second. Okay. I know every day I live, I realize I need the Lord more. I don't feel like I started well. I want to finish well. What I want for you is that you seek the Lord that you trust him, even if it means you're standing alone. 
You got me? Yes, sir. Now, before I beat you to the corner. Huh, you're not gonna beat me to the corner. Just let me get a breath. Okay. What is that? What? Hey, you can't do that! So the last part, I think my De myself and Deza are in the same category where we'd be out of breath, am I right? And we need like a 10 minute head start. But it's, it's, a, it's a powerful movie, by the way. The, the, that the clip comes from a movie called Courageous. And I would encourage every dad to watch that movie. Please download it legally. <laughs> but I would encourage you, every dad, every man, that is, every young man, every granddad, to watch that movie. And at this stage of that movie, the, the family lost the youngest daughter in a car accident. And the dad was struggling of how do we deal with this. And um, God showed him that he needed to cling more to his son. And he makes a statement there that I didn't start well. I didn't start well, but I want to finish well. And I think for most of us that are sitting in the room here this morning, we can identify with that, that we didn't start well. There's a songwriter that, that's written and he says, if I had it to do all over again, I'll serve Jesus every day of my life. How many of us are sitting there? If I had it to do all over again, I'll serve Jesus every day of my life. And maybe we did not start well, but in the moment where we are, we want to finish well. So let's get into the first text and in verse 33, Psalms 119. And this is what the psalmist says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. And I will keep it to the end. Now, I'm not speaking for the psalmist, but when I think about to the end, I'm thinking to the final days until he sees God in his full glory. That he wants to finish well. And like we've seen as part of the prayer of the psalmist praying through this, he wants to grow closer to the Lord. He wants to because he wants to get closer. He wants to obey the commandments. He wants to obey the statutes. He wants to be a better person that God is proud of, but not only that, that he can live a life that pleases him. That live a life that pleases God. And the psalmist knows that life is not easy. And everyone says, life is not easy. And everyone says, amen. We're all on the same playing field here. Whether it's our family, our finances, whatever it might look like, we are all on the same playing field. That life is not easy. For the folk that are sitting in the room here this morning, that are our seniors, is that, is that politically correct? Is that okay? That our seniors, your faith in Christ is actually stronger than what it is as us younger people. Why? Because you have many t-shirts. There's things that you've seen in life and you've seen God bring you through many things that you can stand and worship God and say, yes, Lord, in moments like these, I can stand and lift my hands and worship you. Amen? That's true. We us as young people that we want to finish well, but there's things that are happening in our lives. That are, how can I get through the next day? Man, Monday's coming. <laughs> Monday's coming. How do I open my eyes and step foot into that place the way I think that, man, I'm working for the devil? How do I keep going? So as much as we, our faith levels might be different and our experiences might be different, but there's one thing that we can identify is that life is hard. But the psalmist says, I want, teach me, Lord, your way and your statutes, and I want to keep it to the end. So I want to talk about finishing well this morning. I want to talk about finishing well. Maybe tools that we can put in our toolbox that can help us to get through this so that we could finish well. And maybe having a goal that, yes, Israel, I do want to finish well in whatever that might look like. You know, we, we look at some pastors, unfortunately, that have fallen because of either whatever the circumstances might be, whether it's finances or sex or whatever the case is. But can we say that they finished well? No. Oscar Pistorius, he was known. <laughs> he was idolized by people. But what is he known for now? Is that finishing off well? I'm encouraged by this clip of a dad saying to his son and being upfront and said, I'm not, I didn't start well. 
and I admit it. I didn't start well. But right now, where I'm at, I want to tell you that I want to finish well. And I want the same for you. So you know what? Stick to the Lord. Stick to Him. That's the best gift that you can give your son or your daughter. And the scripture goes on, and let's read Psalms 119. And the psalmist is talking, and he says, Give me understanding in verse 34, that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. In verse 38, confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your rules are good. In verse 40, behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Thank God for his word this morning. You know, when we're on this journey of life, it's easy to get distracted. There was a bloodhound that was chasing a deer. And as he's chasing this deer, a fox crossed his path, and the bloodhound started chasing the fox. And as he was chasing a fox, a rabbit crossed his path, and he changed direction, and now he's off to face to catch the rabbit. And as he's chasing the rabbit, a mouse crosses his path. And he's chasing the mouse, and the mouse goes into the hole. And the bloodhound stands and looks at the hole and waits. And don't you think for some of us, life is like that. That we set goals and we set a destination, but things come across our path and things come across our way that we get distracted. How many of you are like that? That when you're driving, <laughs> and most of you don't stay focused on the road. For, for some of you, you know, that, and you see that happen. I mean, for myself until all that happens. Then I was like, how did you see that? I mean, just yesterday we were driving to, to Baptist Theological College, and I haven't dro- driven that way for a long time, and I noticed there was a huge felt that has been cleared, and it looks so pretty. And Tadal drives that way every single day. And as I'm driving, I say, wow, look, look how pretty that looks. She goes, I didn't even notice that. But the distraction, anything in our lives, we have a goal and we focus, but we don't stick to it. So when has your New Year's resolution started? <laughs> I've convinced that every Monday my New Year's resolution is going to start that I'm going to exercise and eat healthy. Distracted. So every year we make a New Year's resolution, but what happens along the way? Whether it's laziness, or lack of determination, lack of discipline, whatever it might look like, but we get distracted. And maybe you're looking at the hole and stopping and staring there, and you lost focus of the deer that you were chasing initially. But we want to finish well. Then the psalmist says, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep your way to the end. And he says in 34, give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with all my heart. And the first thing that we see that on this journey is that we need to be students of God's word. So point number one is learning. Learning. If you're writing down, the point number one is learning. We are students of God's word. In every aspect of our life, we know that we are students. In fact, if I can, I'm sorry that I'm picking on the senior folk here today. Please forgive me. But even for the senior folk, you're still learning about Facebook. You know, and, and Ron made mention a few weeks ago that we need to have a lesson like, oh, what is Facebook? How do we do that? But, but every day we learn. Technology is, is advancing at a rapid rate. And we're learning. We are students in life. Do you agree? And, this, and the writer and the psalmist is saying, teach me. Teach me. His prayer to the Lord is, teach me, O Lord, that I may. Give me understanding. Because you see, when we, when we get taught, and we know this from school, not everybody, sorry, Elsa, but not all of us love maths, okay? But maths makes sense. Mathematics makes sense, and accounting makes sense. When there's a good teacher, and then we have good understanding of it. Does it make sense? But when, when the both don't go hand in hand, when we're not taught well, and, and we don't do our homework and have a proper understanding of it, it does not make sense to us. Now, when we were in school, and I don't know if it happened for you, I got excited when my balance sheet balanced in accounting. No, I'm serious. We used to make a noise in class because we were nerds. It was a big thing. But... 
when it balanced because there was an understanding in the concept of the principles and the formulas and how it needs to work. The same thing with God's Word. When, we, when the Lord teaches us or when we get into the Word of God and we be students of it, there needs to be an understanding. And the only way that we get that understanding is by having an open heart to allow the Spirit to show us and give us revelation of His Word. Because we can read it from cover to cover and we know that there are guys out there, Richard Dawkins and all these guys that are there out there to disprove the Bible. And they've read it from cover to cover, but without understanding. So they have knowledge and it's all there. But it's the Spirit of God that impacts that knowledge and changes our heart and shows us of what the Lord wants to teach us. In fact, He brings it to the point where we can actually accept it and believe it and live it out. So here's the formula, that when we get taught and we have good understanding, it equals obedience. Okay, so when we get taught, plus understanding, it equals obedience. And we find this in number two. The second part, in verse 35, lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Of finishing well and living out of what God wants to do, Yes, we're listening to his teaching. We need to, get, we need to understand, but we need to obey. Point number two is that we need to obey. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I'll delight in it. We do not like rules. Don't tell me what to do. Does it make sense? Don't force me, because we know this, that when you force me to do something, what do we do? We rebel, and we put up a, a brick wall. We put up a brick wall. It's amazing of how that sinful nature just comes up when we, when we don't want to be obedient. And for those of you that have teenagers, you would see that now. There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> you would see that, the rebellion. So you, as parents, you need to be cautious in the way that you speak and how you do it. And Oh, fun times. <laughs> but obedience... Oswald Chambers, he wrote and he said, The Lord does not give me rules, but He makes His standard very clear. I want you to get that. The Lord does not give me rules, but He makes His standard very clear. If my relationship to Him is that of love, I will do what He says. And maybe we need to pause there for a second. What does our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ look like? Is it one of love? We sang the song, singing, I love you, Lord. What does that look like for us? And he goes on and says, but if I hesitate, it is because I love someone I have placed in competition with him, namely myself. Namely myself. So when we find it hard to obey, when we find it hard to listen to the clear standard of the way that God has unpacked and unfolded and revealed all the mystery to us of who he is when we feel when we find it hard to obey ask yourself this question who are you loving who's replaced him in your life generally it's me because what do we do we look at me myself and i don't we okay now and you you know i like to do this so i'm gonna ruffle a bit of feathers okay and it's okay Jesus loves everybody. So, so yesterday, we, we did a talk about breaking the 200 barrier um, in terms of the life of the church. And one of the barriers is called the us barrier. It's called the us barrier. And it's interesting that when it comes to us and our preferences, we prefer things to be done our way. Does it make sense? So when you order a drink at um, wherever you go, Papachinos, some of you might not like ice, and that's your preference. And when they do bring ice in your drink, you throw your toys out of the cart. It's preferences, okay? I don't like Nando's and I like Machachos. I don't like KFC because I like chicken licking. We all have preferences. And it's interesting that when it comes to the things of God, we also have preferences. And I'm not just talking church. I'm talking about the clear standard that He set for us. And I'm sorry to say this, is that we can't pick and choose. Because he's laid it out for us, for us to live the best life. Do not steal. Yes. <laughs> I like that. 
Do not covet. Yes, I like that. Do not bear false, false witnesses about your neighbor. Yes, I like that. Honor your mother and your father and all the parents say. He's made it clear. Thanks, Lee. He's, God has made it very clear to us. But then we have the us barrier of our preferences. So we live our Christian life not in obedience, but we live our, our Christian life in a way that God must fit into our mold instead of us fitting into His mold. And maybe that's why sometimes our faith stagnates. Maybe that's why we can't see certain things happen in our life because this God, this big God, can't fit into this small vessel. <laughs> he needs to be the center. Obedience. And we need to obey Him with everything. You see, because when we obey God, we find this, the one thing that we hate is that we hate people lying to us. We hate people being deceptive to us. We hate people, and hate is a strong word, but we do. We don't like people lying to us. And when we obey God, we, what do we find? We find that the truth is unraveled. That God cannot lie to us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we obey, He shows us that. Number three is that we go on and, and the psalmist is writing, teach me, O Lord, so that I can keep it to the end. And finishing well, the third, the third thing is, in verse 36, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Verse 37, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. And the third point is delighting. What do we delight in? What do we delight in? And I think that throughout this series, we've kind of highlighted that where our heart needs to be turned more to God than instead of hidden treasures like gold and money and all of these things. And, and the psalmist is saying, turn me, change my heart and change my focus and my eyes so that I'm not focused on worldly things. So if, if we want to be, be focused away from that, if we want to be focused away from worthless things in our life, so you know we, we focus a lot on our, on our house and our car and our bond and, and all the earthly things that we can see. And if we turn our focus and if God does that to us, where does our focus need to go? Because we know that when it comes to money and when it comes to things, we need it. And when you look at it, you know what I believe? Is that God needs to change our heart to a spirit of, generosity he says in verse 36 incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain not to selfish gain i know that there's a pr prosperity gospel out there and if we wanted a million 10 million rand church and we wanted all of that let's change the doctrine of the church and let's preach that hey if you give more you're going to get more you know that there's a scripture in the Bible, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> but that's not what God's saying. That's not what God's saying. The principle of the Bible is generosity. John the Baptist was standing and he was baptizing people and the guys were gathering around him and he was going off crazy and he said, you're brood of vipers, basket of snakes, all these wonderful things. And, the, and in our terms, he said, whoa, 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 relax. What should we do? He's talking to, they're talking to the prophet and he's like, what should we do? And John the Baptist says, if you have two shirts, give one to the other. Generosity. It's a principle. Practice it. Generosity of our time. Lord, change my heart from selfish gain. Lord, focus my eyes that I can see what you want from me, from worthless things. Generosity. Our time, our money, our service, our gifting. What has God gifted you with that you can extend the kingdom of God? What has God gifted you with? What experience has God gifted you with that you can be generous? Remember Zacchaeus? Who remembers the story of Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was up in a... What, what was the name of the tree? The sycamore tree. I don't know what tree that is, but it's a sycamore tree. Eh? He was up in the sycamore tree and he was listening to Jesus. Jesus sees him and tells him to come down. And Zacchaeus worked for SARS. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing's changed over the times because we still don't like the tax man <laughs> and that wasn't the people that you're supposed to hang around with but Jesus did and Jesus says I'm going to come and have supper with you tonight and with that conviction in his heart what does Zacchaeus do 
He takes half of his possessions and he gives it to the needy. Generosity. In order to finish well, we need to live a life of generosity. We need to be good students of his word. We need to be in obedience. But we need to have a heart of generosity. What is it that you can bring to the table that God can use? I like what Ed Stetzer says. Put your name on the map. Am I right? Is that what it is? Make yourself available. Put your name on the map and he'll show you where to go. But generosity. Number four. Something that we all have in our lives is fear. And verse 38, verse 39, Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your rules are good. Something that we all do is fear. We have a fear in our hearts, whatever that might look like. And practically, yes, the fear of death, practically the fear of public speaking, but we have a fear. But ultimately what the psalmist is saying is that I need to fear you. What does that look like, Lord? That's my prayer. Confirm to your servant your promise. And some of us, we need that this morning. Lord, please confirm your promises to me. Because church, I want to say something. If, that if you are holding on to some other promises of the government, uh, petrol prices are going to go down again, or whatever that might look like, if you're holding on to people's promises, I'm sorry to say this, that you are going to be disappointed. I'm not a prophet, but I'm, but I'm saying that to you. But once again, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The fear needs to be on him. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 says, The fear of man lays in a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. You see, the fear of the Lord is the fear that conquers every fear. The respect and honoring of our Father the great I am, the king of all kings, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the way, the truth, and the life. If our fear of the Lord is in him, it conquers every other fear. For the fear of a man is the fear that leads to bondage and destruction. And we do it. We fear men, don't we? We fear our boss. We fear. There is a natural fear. What are people going to think about me if I do this? There's a fear. But we need to come before the Lord. And part of that is that our trust and our faith should be grounded in His promises. And I pray this morning there will be an element in our heart where we get to cast our fears and our cares upon Him and know that He will take care of it. Number five. In verse 40, and He ends this in, Behold, I long for your precepts in your righteousness. Give me life. Is that part of finishing well is longing Every morning there should be a longing for wanting His presence, for wanting Him to be part of our daily walk with the Lord. What does that look like for you? Israel, I'm sorry, I can't spend time with the Lord because, you know, I have to wake up at half past four in the morning um, because I need to get to Santon. Um, I need to get to Santon before the traffic hits. And as you know that, you know, if I'm living, especially in this area, and if I need to get to Santon, and if I don't leave before six, it's not going to happen. And as you know, the, the, the kids need to get to King School Westrand or to Allen Glen or wherever they need to get to. And we need to get them up ready. And you know my, you know my child. You know, they, they just, you know, you know what they're like in the morning. I just don't have time. I just don't have time. What if Jesus had to say that to us? What if Jesus had to say, I just don't have time? Because the love and the passion and the longing for us and having a relationship with Him, you know, He took it so seriously that He went to the cross for it. For you and for me. Are we longing to be in the presence of God? Are we longing and wanting and desperate to have a relationship with Him? The psalmist wants to. Shouldn't we be in that space? So if we want to finish well, number one, be a student of His Word. Obey it with understanding. Delight in Him and His words and have a spirit of generosity. Our fears should be cast on Him and there should be a sense of longing for His precepts and His word. And why should we do all of this? And Paul sums this up and we sang about this this morning. Paul sums this up. And this is what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 4. For I am already being poured out 
as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. We are looking forward to that day when the Lord Jesus Christ says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. That is our hope, church. If you are going through a tough time here this morning, I want you to know that the reason why we want to finish well is because we want to hear those words. There is a crown waiting for us. And we know that if we live according to His precepts, I'm longing for the day to hear those words. I've run the race and I've finished well. But the hope is that Christ is coming back for us. And everyone should say amen. Christ is coming back for us. And if we close our eyes right now, that we are assured that we are absent from the body to be present with the Lord. And if that's your heart's desire, I want to finish well. Let's look. Let's look at being a good student of His Word. Fearing Him, obeying Him, delighting in generosity and what we need to do for His kingdom. But be men and daughters and sons that God can use in His kingdom. So this morning, let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. Let's pray. So teach me, O Lord. Teach me your ways, that I might keep it right to the end. Teach me. Father, I pray, and I thank you for this opportunity again, that we could share your word, open up the scriptures. And maybe there's areas in our life that we need to work on, but I pray that your Holy Spirit will take this word and it'll take root in our hearts to live it out. We know that life is not easy, God. But once again, your promise that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. That you have left us a comforter. You've left us somebody that, that's guiding us and helping us through. So thank you for that, Lord. So this morning, Lord, that even as we leave this place and go out into the mission field, even as we face Monday, as we face Tuesday, as we face the week ahead of us, Lord, I ask you to help us. And those things that we're struggling with, God, and we don't know how to deal with it, I pray, God, teach me and give me understanding of how to do it your way. So this morning, church, may the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.